Shalom, Shalom, this is Kapal Yeke A. Pops at Gym at Chicago with another sit down. Before I get started, though, like always, I want to send all praises on and glory out to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, and To the apostles and elders of GMS out of New York, I want to send double honors because they do real well. To brothers around the world pushing this truth uncut, unfiltered, giving you good, the bad, and the ugly. Of the scriptures correctly breaking down the prophecies and interaction with the people on the planet. I send salutations because we are declaring war on it. For the uh, hopefully elect, I hope this is edifying. For the aqua, the pure, the truth, that's listening to say it and share to keep doing so. But for the scorn of scoff of reprobate, two third Israelites and 17 other nations, you're in the midst of Jacob's trouble and it's going to get worse. I'm going to let this play and I'm going to put some scriptures on at the very end of it, okay? And you can see the title. Nurse is willing to lose her job to avoid getting the vaccine. Here, why? Mission to have 70% of American uh, adults with at least one shot of the vaccination by the 4th of July is facing some headwinds. As of today, 63% have released, received at least one dose. And if we stay on the current trajectory, the U.S. will fall about 6 million people short of that goal. Hmm. So we wanted to talk to some of the millions of people who remain hesitant or resistant to getting the vaccine to find out why. So as you're about to hear, they have many reasons. Here's your pulse of the people. Show of hands, do any of you worry about getting COVID? No, you don't. Okay, so Jennifer, you're a really interesting place to start because you are a registered nurse. And so yes. you, as I understand it, worked in a COVID unit. You saw the worst of the worst. And I would think that you would want to get the vaccine as soon as it's available. But I know that you have hesitance. Basically, I just want some more research. We've been seeing a lot in the hospital, like just between, you know, the patients and the employees that I work with, we're seeing a lot of adverse reactions after Pfizer, Moderna, and J&J. So it makes me a little leery because you don't know, you know, until you take it, if you're going to get one of those reactions or not. Obviously, um, you know, because you're in the medical field, that they have researched these things and millions and millions of people have got Okay, so now she said adverse reactions and things to this nature that she has seen in the unit that she's in. That's where she works. She has seen a lot of adverse reactions. Okay, so now, take that and multiply it <clears throat> by all the different units that are out there and Ask yourself that question there. Out of all the different units that's, that there has been, you know, are, are the numbers accurately being reported and, and collaborated or not? You know, the numbers, because, you know, you got bean counters and numbers and this, that, and other. And we were saying this in the first place that, you know, Will, will, will they give us the correct numbers or, or, or will they just tell us what they want us to know? Okay, so, you know, at this particular point in time, you know, like she said, uh, she done seen a lot of adverse reactions. Okay, and that's just one unit. How many units of uh, medical, you know, people are out there that's in the midst of this that they're seeing these adverse, you know, reactions, okay? So, uh, I'm going to put some scriptures on this. Let me get a scripture. Okay, I got a scripture here. This is Deuteronomy 28. Uh, okay, that was put on, on the Israelites. Okay, this is, this is uh, something from Deuteronomy that was put on the Israelites. I'm going to read this first, and then I'm going to read the second part of this because of the fact that we're in the midst of this now, okay? So it says, Deuteronomy 28, uh, uh, um, I'm sorry, 58. Okay, if thou would not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, Yahweh thy power, 
Okay, it says, Lord, the Lord thy God, then Yahweh, which is it says, Lord, will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuous and sore sicknesses, and of long continuous. 60. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt which thou was afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. 61. Also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Yahweh, which it reads as the Lord, bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Okay? So the, the, the Bible says that this is what the Lord is going to bring to the table. Okay? Now, you say, okay, well, but that was pertaining to the Israelites. True. But now let's go over here to Deuteronomy 30 and 7. Because, see, you got to understand what time you're living in. And that this these, these curses that was put on us are starting to transfer now to these other nations as well. Okay, so 30 and 7. And Yahweh, which it reads, the Lord God will put all these curses upon thy enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. Okay. So the Israelite, the so-called Negro, Latino, and Native American, was, was put under subjection to their enemies, which they're still there to this day. And here in 30 and 7, it says, and how will thy power, which is read the Lord thy God, uh, will put all these curses upon thy enemies. So see the people that you were subject to, and and, and, and uh, serve under, even to this day, those curses are starting to fall on them as well. So, you know, it ain't like we got to go a, a, a long way to to see, you know, wh what what is going on here. And so people are just unsure. Okay, okay. This isn't medical misinformation that, that, that I'm saying because I'm not changing anything that CNN is, is putting out. I'm not changing the message. The people are saying that they're unsure of this message. Okay. I'm just putting Bible scriptures to it to, to, to make it all stick. Okay. That's all I'm doing. Okay. I'm not changing the message that CNN has put out that they deem okay. And this whole deal, this is not any medical misinformation. It's about the people not trusting this, 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 uh, 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 scenario as it was, as it was presented to them. You know, like I said, everything's got like five and 10 year, you know, like the nurse is saying, five and 10 year research and development programs underneath it. Okay. For the most part. But now they done got kind of loosey goosey with, you know, how they supposed to do it. I mean, you know, you put medicines out now that's got disclaimers on it that, you know, it's for this, it's for this particular ailment, but it can cause these side effects, and the side effects sound worse than the damn, uh, uh, than the damn uh, 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 ailment that is supposed to be treating. Okay. So why would anybody want to take, you know, something that the side effects can be worse than the ailment itself? See, this is a medical misinformation. This is just the truth. Look at all the commercials that are on TV now that that are saying about this medicine or that medicine and the side effects can be this and be that and make sure you tell your doctor this and that and if you're going to and it's even got one out there that if you take that uh, you know if you plan on being vaccinated or whatever the case might be make sure you tell your doctors and all these other kind of stuff so how am I then going against the grain if this or I'm, I'm putting out medical misinformation if I'm if if you got all this stuff in, in your TV programs, and it's out there. So now I'm the bad guy because I'm, I'm drawing light to it. It isn't misinformation. It's the information that's out there. Okay, so let's let it play some more.
and then without adverse reactions. They don't have the research to support it or deny it. I mean, you can't verify either way right now because there's not enough proper studies done to really show it. But I think we need a few more years, at least a couple more years to see any long-term effects. Diana, I want to move on to you, and you have an autoimmune disease. Um, so Correct. tell me tell me where your hesitancy lies now. So I know from my past being treated for various uh, illnesses, usually I have bad side effects from that intervention. Um, like, see, and, and, and I can relate to that. I had... Uh, a, a, a medical scenario back in 98 where, you know, it was just, it was painkillers themselves. You know, I had been in a major motorcycle accident, had the situation and they was, you know, they can only give you certain painkillers for so long. And I was, I had been put in a, a coma, an induced coma for for uh, six weeks or so. And it's that now that I wind up being, you know, un un under, you know, intravenous, painkillers uh, and whatnot, and they went to try to switch and slide from one particular painkiller to another particular painkiller, and I had a vital reaction to it. You know, I wind up going schizophrenic, pulling my head back, my girlfriend at that time, hair out, and shit like that. So, you know, like I said, they don't know what this is and, and, and the situations that it can create, you know? Uh, you know, you don't know, you know, and they giving these this stuff to these people, you know, and, you know, if there's no me, an immediate scenario, then they don't know what it could do or bug somebody out. You know, you know, you got people out here, you know, like I said, like I said, I got guys that I served with when I was in the military, you know. Uh, as a security specialist and all these other kinds of things, and you don't know what could be the side effect. You don't know when it could wind up kicking in. You don't know when that medicine can, can twist them and this, that, and the other, and, and create all kinds of stuff. It, it's almost like the people in charge don't care the uh, of the monsters that they can create. You know, you got, got you know, like I said, like you know, uh, 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 certain ex ex experimental. You know, medication, you know, uh, uh, wasn't allowed to be given to certain military people because of the fact that if they carry weapons and this, that, and other, and it bugs them out and twists them out, you know, you, you've got a post, o a, a, a post office situation where the person bugs out and get to shooting up stuff, and it's because the medication flipped them out. You know, they don't, I mean, what, what kind of, uh, 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 of caution have you tossed in the wind on 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 these things you know that's all you know this isn't this isn't a miscommunication you know you you you've got things mixed in here that you don't know how it's going to react to certain people you know you're fine you, the, the, the the medical profession itself is finding out about these things as it's happening you know they come they coming along themselves and saying well, you know, this and that and this, that and other. And here's a lady that's in the medical p uh, profession that said she's seeing all these adverse reactions. So how is this misinformation? How can this be misinformation if this, if these people that are working in these, in these units are seeing these things? You know, there's a girl at the job that took the thing, you know, at the job, and she said that she flipped out. You know, they had to grab her and, 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 and calm her down and flipped her out. It flipped her out. So, you know, they don't, they don't, they really don't know. And, and that, for, for me, that was my hesitancy that I didn't want to exacerbate my Crohn's disease because I've been in remission for so many years. Okay, um, quick, let's move on to you. Tell us your hesitancy about vaccines. Um, I mean, it, a history of just uh, not being able to trust vaccines. Uh, I, I've never been a vaccine guy. Um, a lot of us as black men and black and women in general, uh, we, we've just been hesitant about doing things because we've always been felt felt like we're kind of always set up. Uh, not okay. Okay, set up. Let's let's deal with what he, what the what he's referring to. 
I, you know, if you are a so-called African American, okay, and you don't know about the Tuskegee Institute and that whole scenario, and and, and and what 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 that did, and why it was why it was perpetrated, and why it occurred, and who was behind it, and these types of things. If you want to go and put your head in the sand on that, then you know. As as the cliche say, fool me once, shame on shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. If I know this is your mo and this is how you operate, why am I going to then turn around and give you that trust now? You wasn't those people, but the but the same thing keeps happening and happening. It happened with the same the, the, the same the same group of people was the ones that gave smallpox blankets. To the Native Americans, the so-called tribes of the so-called tribes, uh, which was Reuben and Gad, which they call the Native Americans here. Okay, they gave them blankets that are, that that was you know laced with smallpox. This is this person's mo. This is what they do. So you don't get when it comes to medical medical benefits. And things of this nature that that are life and death, I can't give you that kind of uh, of uh, leeway. I just can't do it. I can't do it. Okay, you know, time has to bear that out if it's going to if that's going to happen or not. But just on on your word, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. And you and you've earned you've earned that reputation. You earned it. Okay? Scripture says what? Let me go here. I'm gonna come right back to it. See if you don't want to pay attention to the Bible. And that's what I'm trying to live my life by. If you don't want to pay attention to it, that's your prerogative. But mine is Sirach, which is Ecclesiasticus 12. Never trust the enemy, for it's like iron rusted, so is his wickedness. Though he humble himself and go crouch and take good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass, and thou shalt know that his rust hath not been altogether wiped away. The wickedness that they do is never going to be wiped totally clean or totally wiped away. Set not the set him not by thee, least when he hath overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. Neither let him sit at thy right hand, least he seek to take thy seat, and thou at the last remember my word and be pricked therewith. Who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent or or any such as come nigh a wild beast. This is this man's M.O. So there's no pity for the person that get, get, that gave them the benefit of the gave them the benefit of the doubt, and then caught the reaction in the process of. As I like I said, the the, the cliche saying, "Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me." Okay, let them go back and let this finish playing out. To win, and yet at some point you did come around and you got the first vaccine. Yeah, so it's crazy because I like I'm a DJ, so I travel a lot for work. So my doctor and my wife, um, they were kind of you know pushing me towards getting the vaccine, and I, I really wasn't for it. Uh, the crazy part, so I, I eventually I, I gave in and I got the first vaccine. Two weeks after getting the vaccine, I contracted it, which really, really turned me off about getting the second one. And so I, I really didn't have any... So, yeah, because the question is if, I, if I'm going to catch it, even after I get the... If, even after I get it, then what's the point? The same way being that, you know, there's been some studies here or, 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 or some statements made by... Uh, uh, the so-called medical profession that's supposed to be at the forefront of this 
that they said that you can wind up having to have booster shots of this stuff and this, that, and other, and blah, blah, blah. So they, they don't absolutely got it locked down. Okay, they don't have this this thing and the situation locked down. This isn't medical misinformation. They saying you have to go back and and, and, and get get bumped and rebumped and all this other kind of stuff. So, you know, I I just prefer I, I'm with these people. I I prefer not to. I prefer not to. Like I said, you know, between between that scenario, you know, you know the the masses. Arm swelling that I had from the military when they hit you with all them all them needles at one time and that and that gun trigger that when you're walking down the inoculation line you know when you're in basic training my arm swole up my my my, my shoulders and whatnot swole up almost the size of a watermelon okay that one shoulder that they hit me in so I'm not real big on 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 on, on these things anyway okay you know. I it swallowed up so big I thought it was gonna bust. So I'm I'm just not I'm not I'm not into it. I'm not into it. Okay? So let's let's see what this says. And that's the only reason I'm I'm put because true true to form or true to home, you know, I, I know I, I've had reactions and things of this nature. So, you know, I have to be extremely cautious when it comes to things of this magnitude. No symptoms. I had a, a, a fever. I didn't lose any sense of taste or smell or anything like that. Okay, but the fact that you didn't have more severe symptoms, maybe you can thank the vaccine. See, and you and you want to spin it because you didn't. But you know, in in, in the average person mind, is if I take something, it's like preventive maintenance. If I if if. I see that there's supposed to be a problem with a car, a particular car. Okay, this says it's got charging problems, the original alternators or whatever the case might be that was manufactured at that time was a bad thing and this, that, and the other. And, you know, the, 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 the report on the car is, is that, you know, the alternator can go out while it's running and whatnot, but you really won't notice it during the day. But if you go out at night and you're driving this car and you drive it way out somewhere, you know, the lights will go dim. It it eventually, you know, because the alternator won't be won't be charging the battery. So once the battery loses its own charge, you know, then you don't have enough power you don't have enough electrical power to even spark the plugs and whatnot to, to let it get back. So this is going to this, this car can put you down and it will put you down at night out there when you've been driving it and driving it and driving it and your lights have been on for on a long time. So you go and you go and put a new alternator on it trying to avoid it. But that issue happens anyway. That's like that's what this brother that, that's, that's what the brother is saying. You know, the irony is, is that I changed the alternator. But it happened anyway. Okay? I changed the alternator and it wound up happening anyway. Okay? Or, or, or worse yet, let's say you went and got an a, a, a alternator from the, from the dealer. And the alternator that the dealer sold you was in the same lot. That the alternator that was put on, uh, on the assembly line. So you cha- you you paid top dollar for an original equipment alternator, and that alternator put your ass down while you was out there because it slipped through the cracks, and that's the, the serial number that was on that alternator was in the same batch of alternators that was made at that time. See what I'm saying? It's kind of like. You know, I'd have been better off going or waiting or or, or, or going somewhere else and, 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 and seeing what happened. So everybody is in that let me wait and see mode. And, and nobody wants to deal with the fact that, you know, with the reputations and everything that have been these people M.O. That that they don't they don't have that trust. They shouldn't expect that trust. They should actually expect the people to be skeptical, especially certain peoples that 
it's been shown that uh, 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 the percentage, the uh, the percentage of uh, their uh, their uh, self preservation and um, uh, how how people look at them as trying to protect them from things isn't as great as it as it should be. Okay, they have a very low per percentage rating as to you know uh, uh, how 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 um, how important is it for them to get this right based on what they've already have had happen to you in the past as a people or a nation. Okay, let me let this play through. That you got. Uh, you sound like my doctor. Uh, he, he, he said the exact same thing. Um, and like I said to him, um, maybe, but maybe not. Like, we don't know. And I think that the part that's frustrating, and someone else mentioned it, we just don't have enough data. Right now, we're all still guinea pigs. So did you get your second shot? No, I have not gotten my second shot. Um, and I honestly, uh, if you ask, if your next question, uh, my plan on getting a second shot, um, today my answer is I don't know. Janine. Tell me about your hesitancy. What's what's it based on? I had COVID in February, so I have natural immunity. There's no reason for me to get the vaccine. There's no reason for me to take the vaccine doses from vulnerable people uh, in the in this country or in other countries who need it more than I do. You just uh, don't I've know how long your natural immunity will last. There we, aren't. We don't know how long the immunity from the vaccine lasts. This is a, uh, taken on a religious mentality, in my opinion, on the on the progressive liberal side of the spectrum. Has this experience with COVID changed your politics? Yes, it's changed my politics. Now I'll vote for anybody who, who cares about civil liberties and who doesn't allow the trampling of our rights that we've seen over the past year. Um, Jennifer, I see you applauding, so tell me your thoughts. Um, I, I'm loving hearing her talk right now. She Everything she says, I basically agree with. I, I was really applauding the young lady who said something about um, just taking away our First Amendment rights. Not only am I a DJ, I am a club owner. I, I, so uh, what this did to businesses, um, a lot of businesses will never recover. I, I know the government tried to do certain PPP, but all the big major billion dollar and Fortune 500 companies, they got all the big grants. Um, and for a lot of our small businesses, especially black owned businesses, uh, we were left with crumbs and you get what you can get and now you got to pay it back. I mean, it just, all of this has become so unfair and, and so political. And I think that's why there's this, 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 this trust because we see that people are doing things now not for health reasons but for business reasons and last jennifer your boss says that everybody needs to get the vaccine by june 7th or lose their job are you willing to lose your job as a result of not getting it Absolutely. I've actually had multiple companies reach out to want to hire me now because they respect the fact of what an advocate I'm being. And I'm totally prepared to lose my job. She's willing to lose her job for something she believes in. I respect that more than someone who does something just because the world says it's the right thing to do. Got credit card debt? And with that... I want to send all praises, honor, and glory out to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, and Kakwadash, to the apostles and elders of GMS out of New York. I send double honors because they do rule well to the brethren around the world, pushing this truth uncut, unfiltered, giving you the good, the bad, and the ugly of the scriptures, correctly breaking down prophecy and interaction with people on planet. I send salutations because they, we are declaring war on it uh, for the people. For the uh, election's sake, I hope that this is edifying for the aqua, the few and the truth that's listening to said and charity keep doing so. And for that whole group of people, I send a hearty shallow warm. But for the uh, but for the two third Israelites and seventeen other nations that are in the midst of Jacob's trouble, that's going to get a whole lot worse, according to the scriptures. To you all, a barber ball. <laughs>